Tribal caucusing is a very dangerous venom against the unity of a country. And it is a precedence that if not arrested in time, it's going to take us down the road. The Standard um, and a couple of other newspapers are reporting a Sunday night meeting that was allegedly held in a home, in a Runda home, that brought together high profile politicians from the Mount Kenya region, like Kimani Chungwa and Weguru, and a host of some other governors and senators and MPs from Mount Kenya, in what has been touted as a meeting planned, uh, the meeting that is being planned to put together a team of Mount Kenya politicians so that they can find a way forward in the wake of the new political discourse, the second round of the talks, mediation talks that are being spearheaded by Obasanjo. And it is very clear, and I can tell you without, um, I can tell you to make this clear observation. There is one politician that is, has become a know-it-all. And he seems to be the one talking about the mediation talks with some clear, um, with some sinister motive. Kimani Chungwa is struggling to convince the population that, Uhuru, that uh, William Ruto is against bipartisan talks and that bipartisan talk, not bipartisan talks, the mediation talks, and that it is a Raila Odinga affair. Kimani Chungwa has said that Raila looked for Ruto first day of the protests. And he had, now that is what he's saying now, that he had even proposed to Basanjo, and Uhuru and Ruto allegedly met Basanjo first, then from meeting Basanjo, then they met Raila, with Raila Odinga then in that meeting. But he was not part of that meeting. And has become the propaganda machinery on this, with one clear intention to depict the protest, uh, the, 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 the mediation talks, as if William Ruto is not interested, and probably it's true, he could be employing a script. But then, after the Sunday night meeting, the country was shocked because Monday, Moses Kuria, who allegedly was not part of such a meeting, came up with a very controversial tweet and controversial in the context of the Mount Kenya space, supporting the mediation talks between who, between Raila and Ruto saying that it's healthy for the economic um, revival of the country, for investment um, uh, growth of the country. Now, he was not part of that, they said, Sunday night meeting. But he could have been privy to what's going on because I think intelligence is all over and I think William Ruto, uh, either he knew and decided not to meddle or even he's the person who organized the said meeting. But Moses Kuria will then come with the voice of William Ruto because if you realized in William Ruto's cabinet there is normally a gun for hire and that gun for hire is normally Moses Kuria. So when Moses Kuria says something, no, that is William Ruto, by the way. In terms of the stake of Mount Kenya, that is William Ruto. Make the third observation in respect to this meeting. The Gadigeshagwa, after coming back in the country, uh, flying back after the, the trips in, uh, in, in Italy and Dubai, came and has been so cagey about the Obasanjo talks. In fact, he's failed to comment about the talks, but has picked the discussion about the police brutality and has taken the position of defending the government over the police brutality complaints that have often been raised. And so if you check how the Mount Kenya stake has been going on, it is something that is at the table. And if you want to know that um, this is something that is within um, imagination of the politicians is, 
Yesterday, when a line raised a question that uh, Martha Karua allegedly demanding, was demanding that Jeremiah Kioni be included in the five members Mio team, remember, they be demanding that Jeremiah Kioni be added, the, the, the statement or rather the position of Karua was that Jeremiah Kioni will represent the Mount Kenya interest. I, I honestly believe so, that uh, that will be a very good state. But then, I think the structure, the basic structure of the, uh, the, by the mediation talks, there is no cutout on what a, re a region is going to get, apart from just them having individuals there. But no cutout. There is nothing like if a Mijikenda is not there, then they are not going to get an IBC with a Mijikenda. I don't think that's it. And the discussion cuts across. And so, um, there have been that. Remember, this information is coming at a point when the Kenya Kwanzaa asked for more time for them to come up with um, the list of those who are going to be in the bipartisan talks after Azimio Moja released their names, their, their, their list. They are yet, uh, the government said, I yes to give a list. Probably seen as a delaying tactic because Ray Lodinga and Azimio team are saying the talks should only last for one month. So by the September, the talk should be done. But now, as today is the first, the Kenya Kwanzaa team are yet to give a list. They said they're still consulting. And probably the Sunday night meeting was part of the consultation. Now, I want to answer the question that even many of my viewers have been asking here. And uh, that is the question of what is the stake? What is the stake of Kimani Chungwa and the juvenile politicians from the mountain in the wake of these talks? Dindi Nyoro is silent. You've not, you've not heard him talking. You realize a couple of those who've been shouting have gone silent. But the question here is, what is the greatest fear? Or why, what is the insecurity with any all sort of mediation? I want to explain that in this. So make sure you watch this to the end. And But before that, let me remind you about Top Mark Movers. Top Mark Movers are amazing company in the country, Kenya here. They will help you move your office items and household goods. Maybe you've got a new job somewhere and you're relocating. You need a company that can handle your treasures in a very safe manner, very professional, and so that you don't lose value for your money. That is why contact Top Pack Movers here. 07 19 17 43 93. Top Pack Movers will get you sorted. Kimani Chungwa and the team are planning to float one man, one shilling, one vote. That fresh put, that fresh push to push a Mount Kenya agenda. Because what has actually been going, what is going on here is the voters are asking, what are the leaders doing? The question of what are the leaders doing, you know, for politicians, especially the Mount Kenya politicians, the biggest worry here is how can we project ourselves as people who are caring for the voters? Because in real sense, they've been praising William Ruto every morning, Monday to, Monday, Monday to Sunday, in every press conference, and that has given the president some comfort about them. So what they're simply doing here is this. There are these fresh talks. It, could, it is a mediation talks between both sides. One of the things they are floating to bring in board on board is the question of one man, one shilling, one vote. Take that to bank and wait. That's why the governors have also been roped in. That's exclu exclusive on the table. One man, one shilling, one vote. I don't know how that will be because remember... In the recommendations, there is the retrenchment, I think, entrenchment of CDF in the Constitution, I think. And there is also that office of Musalem Davali. But I don't want to get into that first. So they have seen already there is a discussion about CDF. One man, one shilling, one vote. Apart from the county allocation, 
the formula for county allocation. There have also been a discussion amongst the members of parliament that have argued that there are those who come from areas that are densely populated. But when it comes to the share of the CDF, it's the same. So an MP uh, getting the same kitty from western to Nyanza to central and, and northeastern. But if you look at the population, which, which is normally a very reasonable thing, you know, me, I support it. It, it makes a lot of sense. There is no way. We are giving 2 million. Let's say we are giving 5 million to an MP in Nigeria. And the number of registered vote, the number of uh, people that maybe are supposed to benefit in terms of even the child bursary are some 3,000 or 2,000. Then an MP in Central or an MP in my constituency, Valego Usonga. Valego Usonga is one of the, that's my constituency. That has a very large, it's a very large place, by the way. Then that MP is also given 2 million and is serving 10,000 students. You are actually seeing the issue of equity. So I support it. The man one shilling, looking at it in the context of CDF, but it's not an exclusive Mount Kenya problem. That's what we also need to agree. My constituency, Alego Songa, wah! Nakwambia, when you want to traverse a constituency using a motorbike, you spend like 2,000. Using a motorbike, 2,000, that point, that point, that point. And I come on a drive, you can drive for almost three hours. You are still within a constituency, moving a constituency. So it's not something, it's something that has to be relooked at. So that's number one. Number two, I think the Mount Kenya politicians are worried about any sort of ceasefire between Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta. If there is going to be any, some sort of ceasefire, it's going to vanquish high profile politicians and political careers are going to die. There are political careers that were built around Uhuru Kenyatta. Truth be told, there are some members of parliament that launched their campaigns, they launched their political careers in 2013 when Uhuru Kenyatta was vying for presidency. And they rode in Uhuru Kenyatta euphoria to get those parliamentary positions. Then after riding on Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, presidency by then, they again benefited it in 2017. Then after realizing that Uhuru was going to make an exit, they decided then to incite the voters against Uhuru Kenyatta by using him as a punching bag. Now, in that sense, they were seen as the messiahs of the voters. Clearly, that is why you see the fallout between Ruto and Uhuru came as a blessing in disguise to them. So it has been commod it has been weaponized for quite so long. Now, in any case that Uhuru is going to close ranks with Ruto at the end of these talks, then what are you going to expect? These politicians are going to lack because they will have now to face the voters with the reality card. You're not going to force, face the voters with the emotions. If there is a ceasefire, you will not continue telling the voters about uh, Uhuru alifanya ile, Uhuru akufanya hi, Uhuru is about this, Uhuru is about that. That discussion is going to end. When, when you don't have that discussion, then about it. So that is why their worry is, is there going to be sort of a ceasefire? So they must create a way in which this mediation talks, it can be between Uhuru, it, it can be between Ruto, and Raila or Kalonzo, but to still find a way of hitting Uhuru Kenyatta, blaming Uhuru Kenyatta for the mess. Or making sure that the talks collapse. Lastly, Mudavadi Kad, as proposed by Ruto, is causing jitters. On government side, there have been multiple reports that Mudavadi has been proposed. Uh, you know, Azimila Omoja produced Kalonzo Musioka. Um, they've to lead the mediation talks on behalf of the coalition. And you know, yes. On the other government side, there is also a discussion of Kalonzo Musioka being, uh, of Musalem Mdavadi being floated. Now, what they are seeing is when you have Mdavadi and Kalonzo there, you know, it's, those are the high profile individuals that are going to be there. They are trying to find a way, probably to stop Musalem Mdavadi. Because in any case, and this is why I say, if there are going to be resolutions of that mediation talks, are there going to be some implementation, some things that are supposed to be done, it will be there. You know, there is, and, and it's very suspicious, eh? because it came somewhere from the moon. You know, amongst the proposals that Kenya Kwanza has proposed is to institutionalize the, institutionalize the office of Musalem Davadi. Institutionalizing the office of the chief 
cabinet, is it that prime minister? Is something because it was created now from Davadi. But if it is part of the talks, they are seeing a high probability of political games being played. So there is an inside deal to kick out Musalem Davadi from that and probably make sure. Because when you have Mdavadi, then the talks are going to be, there's going to be another level. Because Mdavadi is sober. Mdavadi and Kalonzo, those are, they're, they're, they're more diplomatic. So Kenya Kwanza would want to propose a team of fellows that are just going to yell and get run propaganda narratives about it. For example, when, 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 Kalo, when Mdavadi is on the other side of government, what does it mean? They're not going to do propaganda press briefings. They're going to do press briefings that are going to be very concrete and with the ideal uh, statements that are supposed to be made. So they want to push Mdavadi out so that they can find a way of running their propaganda. That's my take on the said meeting stake. Thank you.